uh, I just wanted to know where are we headed to this move on to the next level you are using just your thoughts and the things are getting done very very interesting but in the enterprise space again then there are other issues in terms of how do you ensure data security data privacy Stephen Hawking lives today probably he will be able to use this uh... so data silos have always been a big challenge who is typically the custodian of a data strategy data strategy and data governance to ensure that people are not holding and hiding data Hi Anirban, good to meet you. How are you? Hey Jadeep, yeah, I'm doing good. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Anirban. Thank you. Thanks for being here. I'm curious to actually pick up an interesting conversation with you, and I'm looking forward to it. Um, but why don't we just get started? Um, so, uh, what we will do is um, we will uh, probably segment our discussion into two parts. the first part i'll share a couple of media article and news that i recently came across and i would love to have your views on that and the second segment is where um, i want to take your way in terms of how enterprises can adopt ai more efficiently and uh, effectively i would love to know your point of view on on that side as well okay right? sure sure so let's get started um ivan so um you know one of the interesting article that i recently came across uh, i think last week is elon musk new company neuralink right um so musk said that uh, now neuralink has uh, um implanted successfully a chip uh, inside a human being's mind um and by doing so the human being can actually control a mouse by his thought right now that is uh, almost like a science fiction to me right it's very interesting and very yeah. intriguing too uh, i just wanted to yes. know where are we headed to uh, you know what's happening actually in that space right uh, yeah so it, it is actually you know quite quite fascinating i mean so this neuralink chip when well, this is uh, primarily uh, been designed for folks who have suffered stroke paralysis etc and they not even do the reactions at all so then uh, and then when is the problem fine okay so how can we help them to control the different artifacts around them and try to make it as far as possible normal life so this is the first step towards that and so now this person the first patient who yeah. has a bad one this is any he just now I'm going to control the how I'll just choose the pops so right so now we look at the way the things start moving right you had first to go to a uh, universe stars and then in the old uh, mainframes from there you move to languages and then it took very long and now this ai engineering here you are saying that you have to do prompt engineering you are still have to do something right i don't get from you by adding or it would be by speaking we have do the instructions uh, to the ai and to to be stuck it uh but now here is on to the next level on uh, using just your thoughts that the things are getting done so you don't even have to you know speak or i and i think uh, over a bit of time this uh fast step will actually get a more speed so more and more things like not just for uh you know patients like paralytic saham but even for elderly and all who find it difficult of these things can be very useful right and again very, there very is interesting other that. yeah yeah i, I think mean, uh, they... you know i think uh, one of the common or rather one of the interesting thought that came in my mind while you were telling about this clearly um, healthcare here seems to be one of the uh, obvious and and very useful use case in this case apply okay. this um, technology should they decide to go this uh, go about um, doing this more 
but on a larger scale commercially maybe at some point of time and so on and i can think now if uh, stephen stephen hawking uh, lives today probably he will be able to use this uh, technology and probably a lot more productive and we probably could have expected a lot more from him absolutely absolutely so folks like him uh, in this kind of pool i mean they could have definitely have been much more productive this is fascinating i mean the way uh, the the ai in use cases are getting diversified right um, Yes. See, the other interesting uh, piece of news that I came across uh, recently is um, apparently now with um, NVIDIA GPU, you can bring your own ChatGPT or let's say a similar um, LLM enabled AI um, chat tool, and um, you know all of us can individually bring in a user uh, using um, NVIDIA GPU. What does it even mean? I mean, are we going to all see that we're all having our individual uh, AI conversational chat tool with us? And why do we even need that? Yeah, uh, this is pretty fascinating. Uh, they have launched this, uh, what they call the Chang with RTAs, the in Canada. So if we have a machine, our those machine which has uh, the GPU bikes, so you can uh, install the software and use the little and at least specifically for uh, in our opinions and the videos or whatever store in your country, you can also provide a nice to certain uh, public stuff like this on YouTube videos and things like that. And the interesting thing is that then this is very, very, they will, uh, your dance has always focused, uh, you know, the sphere that you have uh, given the boundaries to, right? So, there it makes it very easy to it makes it more makes it more productive, right? So for example, I go through all this reports all the time, right? Different people, it could be a long report or it could be a desk of report, it could be a data report, it's that. And then I uh, cover then I have then when when I really want to boost the report, I remember it's somewhere I it's somewhere, but so that's just difficult to find the regular search that you yes, have really. in, because you know you remember the exact sentences or words that were used. So this now makes it that much more you know easier for us to oh, get those girls stuff. It may even mean that if you have certain videos or training videos or some propositions, uh, you think okay, and then get somebody in and use that also when you are uh, doing your research as such. So it makes it very interesting. Of course, there are other flip sides also. On the personal side, if you're using it, uh, it's great. Whether you're a student or an economic poser, you get to do a lot of stuff. But in the enterprise space, again, then there are other issues in terms of how do you ensure data security, data privacy, and all those things. But I think slowly, organizations will figure out a way to use this power while also ensuring that it doesn't go bad. That's what I think. And and does this also mean that um, an individual, if they, if I were to use it today, I need to switch to a GPU and I'll not be able to use using my laptop? No, um, there are laptops for doing GPU cards. So, okay. especially those gaming laptops and all, they all have GPU cards. So, mm. you can use it. So, yeah, like regular uh, laptops, many of them don't have, but yeah, you can always install them and then use it. Got it, got it. Um, you know, I think it's just getting fascinating and the space is really heating up. Um, right. Uh, it's now only up to an individual's imagination uh, where and how the use cases are going. But um, I think, as you mentioned, that um, it, uh, in this case, probably we'll be able to serve it, us with a better and accurate results. Um, right. And maybe faster. Correct. Great. I think uh, these are interesting conversations and we'll continue to dialogue and chat uh, in the coming weeks as well. Uh, we will probably now switch to um, another segment where I really want to pick your brain. Um, a very important topic when it comes to implementing any data project and more importantly, implementing now Gen AI or AI projects, right? Um, and that is data silos. Um, one of the challenges uh, that data silos basically poses is while implementing and extracting value from um, 
say uh, implementing gen ai at an organizational level um, if the data if there is a data silo um, obviously you will not be able to get the best results right and and as a result um, uh, you know there is a significant amount of time and uh, efforts investment that that goes into to sort of build that kind of an uh, enterprise level uh, deployment um, mm-hmm. what can organizations do um, to start with uh, to avoid such data silos and, and overcome these challenges yeah sure yeah as you said so data silos have always been a big challenge and we have faced uh, you know issues in many of our own uh, experiences working with different customers right so for example we we were we working with a very large one of the largest uh, companies in the, uh, and uh, they had an issue in some of their uh, groups where the sales guys the sales uh, data showed certain numbers and so sales person would think so i have done this much so my bonus would be this much for this quarter but the hr data had some a little different and so there are always uh, differences and then that used to cause hr problems so right because uh, of the difference is, is it because uh, is it because the, you know two different uh, set of applications are running and the data is exactly. not in okay exactly yeah so that that was the big issue so then we had to go and then you know kind of clean up create a single data mart for them so that going ahead there would not be any such issues right i mean these are some basic things so even if you're not doing uh, analytics or ai or gen ai anything but still uh, to ensure pro- proper execution you have to have the data and the data silo always creates the problem that you know uh, there's no single source of truth so it is my data shows versus your data shows kind of thing so there again you have a lot of issues so which is why i mean for ages now people have been saying that you should have a single source of truth which can be in the form of a data lake or data warehouse whatever you want to call that and then put everything there so that you know everyone is in sync that's the first thing that okay this data is the master data this is the truth and then on top of that you do your bi dashboarding analytics and then move on to ai gen ai whatever right and uh, that's where so it is it is very important that an organization should have a data strategy right so that is the beginning so that you say okay this is my data strategy this is how i'm going to you know manage data this is how i'm going to gather data store data manage data and then dispose of data right you cannot keep certain data for ages so then the data governance and, and, and then you who who is typically the custodian of a data strategy it depends but uh, in very large companies you may have a cdo so the chief data officer mm-hmm. might do it in mid size organizations or small organization it should be either the ceo or cfo who should be you know looking at being the custodian uh, or the chief uh, uh, in this matters and then what you should also have is for the different types of data you should have data stewards who should be owning the responsibility and they should also have the thing that not only should i ensure that the data is there it is the right data the data quality also becomes very important right so uh, is the data that i have collected my system whether it's my crm or erp or any regular homegrown uh, it application which is generating some data so is the data quality correct or if i am getting data from a third party right so is it is it uh, uh, of the right uh, you know quality because once you have all this done and you have the proper data strategy the right data governance processes set up then you have a data in the right format and on top of that you can do uh, you know train your ai models to get better results otherwise what will happen is if your models are trained on a limited set of data then its accuracy uh, can go down right because it doesn't have a thing so for example uh, and also other things is also bias may create so for for example if you are a walmart and walmart has created a chatbot for its employees for productivity reasons now if they train it only with us data and then try to use it in europe 
then the biases will creep in and it will give results Absolutely. which the employees will not like right they will say what nonsense it is been and they'll stop using that system once the employees mm. get the feeling that you know this doesn't work that's mm. what happens in uh, it all the time right you build some system and if it doesn't work properly employees mm. are only quickly going to go away from it so, so there is a cultural sensitivity part as well cultural is there but their way of doing business may be also different right because of you know mm. uh, regulations so correct, it could be correct, any of this correct. Right, uh, right. but yeah. your the way of doing things uh, you know uh, could be different like for example what is the cut off age for selling tobacco to a person right it could be 18 mm. somewhere it could be 25 somewhere so those are basic things so how do you ensure that those biases don't keep in those inaccuracies don't keep in by ensuring that the full data set is available for you to train your ai models uh, in that right okay and uh, other thing is also uh, if you don't have them together there could be issue of data security data leakages and all in the sense that if you have data in different sources that might be uh, it may give out certain data which is it is not supposed to hmm. one is because of your uh, group like if you are in uh, say sales you should not be as you not have access to say payroll data uh, mm. you know of your company or HR other data. things but mm. yeah so those kind of things are if you are in <clears throat> say karnataka today should not have access to data of maharashtra for example so those kind of things are there now how do you uh, ensure that the leakages don't happen unless mm. you train it on all the data right so those are various aspects because of which it has always said that you know try to avoid data silos uh, it is the uh, data silo removal also you know, we have to understand is not just an it or technology thing it is also uh, sometimes political becomes it it, it, it is uh, sometimes an organizational thing so which is why i said you know if it's there's no chief data officer the ceo or ceo for someone very senior has to push that data strategy and data governance to ensure that people are not holding and hiding data Okay, for for whatever power games they want to play, so some of this can be very interesting, right? And also, <clears throat> as you have more data, the performance of the model obviously will increase. So the, your accuracy improves, your uh, efficiency improves, um, and um, I think the so going back to the point that you mentioned, starting. with you know creating a data strategy and then uh, basically creating clear guidance in terms of how where the data will be stored how the data will move who will be responsible for what set of data um, internally and then what data is exposed to externally cus- to customers um, all of that obviously requires uh, you know for these organizations to sort of come together you know different uh, leaders to essentially share um um and and with full confidence be transparent with what is there what is not there and so on so that ultimately it becomes one pool um is only when um the data is sort of uh, quality wise can be checked objectively and then uh, yes. you know be make it ready i guess for uh, putting a gen ai engine on top of that uh, to essentially Correct. Correct. get the best output right Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Great. So I think this was uh, quite insightful, Anirban, um, and uh, I look forward to chatting up with you more on some of these topics in terms of how enterprises can actually um, adopt AI more efficiently and effectively um, in the in the coming weeks. So great chatting with you, and talk to you soon again. Yeah, it was great talking to you, Jadeep, and yeah, look forward to our next conversation.